Hello, Abundant Life Christian Fellowship members and guests. Over the next several weeks, as we navigate this coronavirus pandemic, I want to send out weekly a weekly video to you to encourage you during this time. And so that's what I'm doing today. And one of the things I was thinking about is that a lot of us have a range of emotions right now. A lot of them are negative, right? Our world has been flipped upside down in, in a lot of ways. We are no longer in our normal routines or normal schedules. Uh, so I think that can contribute to some of the negative emotions that we're feeling. Some of us are probably having cabin fever. Some of us are um, probably growing weary of this isolation that we're experiencing, especially if we're extroverts and like being around people. And then there are those fears. Uh, you know about contracting this virus there are those fears maybe financial worries and concerns especially if you're close to retirement or you have retired and you're looking at your nest egg and you're looking at your investments and there wasn't a ton there to start with and now with what what's happening with the economy there, there can be some real concerns fears and worries um, if you are you know 60 or above and you have uh, diabetes or some of these other health issues that can put you at a higher risk uh, for uh, having adverse effects if you do contract this disease all those things can just be can weigh on you and maybe you're sad maybe you're depressed maybe you're just downright afraid and, and, and scared if so that is okay and I think one of the things that we do as Christians is we know that all right we're not supposed to worry and we're supposed to have this you know big faith and 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 so we are experiencing all these negative emotions but we put a face on and we put a front on that oh we're doing fine and we're just trusting in the Lord and everything is good and okay because that's what good Christians do the problem is these negative emotions that we experience, even though we suppress them or try to ignore them or try to distract ourselves from them, they don't ignore us. They have a way of making a home in our bodies. And what happens is they will come to the surface at some point. And maybe it's be being irritable uh, with your family. Maybe it's lashing out at anger at someone. Maybe it is just this general low level kind of anxiety that you always are walking around with and are experiencing. So these feelings, those, if we try and ignore them, they're not going to ignore us. The best thing we can do is be real. And we need, when we're experiencing these negative emotions, we need to take them to God. And we need to be completely honest and transparent in our relationship to Him. We need to cry out to Him and tell Him, like, this is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm afraid of. Another thing we can do, I, you know, we're supposed to cast our cares on the Lord because He cares for us. Another thing we can do is cast our cares and our worries and our concerns on another brother or sister in Christ. We are to carry each other's burdens. And often when we are experiencing negative emotions, we need to receive empathy from them. We need them to uh, hear us out, uh, to validate what we're experiencing and feeling on the inside. We need them to be able to express like, I got you, I, I, I'm with this in you. We need empathy. And once we receive that empathy, then we're in a position to be redirected to the truth. And we need to be redire re redirected to the truth. That we do have an amazing God who loves us, who cares for us, who is putting a hedge of protection around us, who is surrounding us with his, his uh, hedge of protection and his love. And that he will only allow the things into our life that he plans to use for ultimate good. We eventually need to be redir redirected to that truth. But one of the worst things that we can do for other people, and one of the wor one of the most unhelpful things for us is when we're experiencing these negative emotions is to have somebody say, oh, quit worrying about it. God's got you. Because what they're saying is, look, you don't have a right to feel that way. 
um, they mean they they mean well, right? They're trying to help, but it makes you feel like you're almost like a bad person because you're having these negative emotions and thoughts and worries, right? Um, same thing is if somebody comes to us and they start expressing how they're feeling. Boy, if we don't take time to tune with them and we go really quickly to redirecting them to the truth, their heart is not going to be prepared to receive the truth that we have to tell them. And so I want to encourage you to be open and honest with God with the negative emotions you might be experiencing. And I want you to be open and honest with, with other people. I want you to receive empathy from them. And then... I think you're going to be in a position to be redirected to the truth. And I encourage you to be an excellent listener to people who are going through a difficult time and give them the empathy they need. Don't, don't make them feel judged or as a uh, not good Christian because they're experiencing the emotions that they're experiencing. We need to learn how to lament in a good godly way. Um, we see this, and I'll just close with this, we see this pattern in the Psalms, right? King David, he knew how to lament. He knew how to bring his negative emotions to the Lord. And what we see is then, um, as he does that, the Lord cares for those emotions, and then he's redirected to the truth of who God is and how much God loves him. Let me just read you Psalm 40. We see this at play here. Psalm 40 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, the song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds in your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. In sacrifice and offering you have not delighted, but you have given me an open ear. Burn offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips as you know, O oh Lord. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from this great congregation. As for you, O Lord, you will not restrain your mercy from me. Your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me. For evils have encompassed me beyond number. My iniquities have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head. My heart fails me. But are, be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and disappointed altogether who seek to snatch away my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who delight in my hurt. Let those be appalled because of their shame who say to me, Aha, aha. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O oh my God. And so we hear, we see in this Psalm, King David, he's going from remembering God's past faithfulness, celebrating God's past faithfulness. And then he goes to in the present, like I have evil all around me. The, 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 there's so many of them, more than the hairs on my head. My heart is failing me right now, Lord. Please deliver me. Make haste to help me. And so he's crying out. He's given his negative emotions to the Lord. And as the Lord cares for those negative emotions, you see him turning back around, being redirected to the truth of God's faithfulness and how great the Lord is and how mighty he is to save. May you be like David during this uh, crisis. And if you need anybody to talk to, uh, please get, get a hold of us, connect uh, with us. 
uh, through our uh, our Facebook page. You can reach out to us. You can send an email uh, to us at our on our website alcfohio.org.